Hey everybody. So today I'm gonna to start a story all about a journey across the whole continent of Australia. It's about a family that took a trip and they journeyed all across Australia, the whole continent. Remember the continent is the smallest continent and it is an island. So I guess they could do it. So we're gonna find out what they did. And the story is called, Are We There Yet? It's by Alison Lester, A Journey Around Australia. So there's the family, there's their car, and they took a road trip all around Australia. Let's, we're gonna read part of this story today. And as I'm reading the story, you have a sheet in your folder. And there's this place in your sheet, in your Are, you, Are We There Yet sheet, for you to make a little mark every time the family visits a new place. Now your mark might be a check mark, or it could be a little dot. Your mark might be a star, or your mark might be an X. Any kind of mark you wanna make. But I want you to keep track of how many different spots this family visits. Tomorrow we're gonna to do the same thing. And then it's gonna be your job to figure out, to try to use these marks to figure out how many places this family visited in the whole book. So if you haven't got that sheet out yet, your Are We There Yet sheet from your folder, you can pause this video right now and go get it because you're gonna need it to make your marks as you listen to the story, okay? All right, are we there yet? At the very beginning of the book, we have a map of Australia and it's showing us the route, the trip that this family took. Check this out. They went all the way up here all the way around. Now that is a long trip. Starting out. The year I turned eight, I'm gonna turn my camera so you can see the whole book. The year I turned eight, mom and dad took us on a trip around Australia. Luke, Billy, and I missed school for the whole winter term. That's how long it took them. They had to miss school for part of the year. Nan and Papa stayed behind to look after Buffy and Tigger and Bess, their pets. We towed Papa's old camper trailer, and it was our home for three months. It folded out to make a little house with a table, a fridge, two double beds, a stove, and a sink. We practiced in the backyard before we left. That's what it looks like inside their camper. Luke slept in his sleeping bag under the stars, except when it rained. And then he bunked with us. We were squashed, but it was cozy. The day we left, I helped Nan pin up a big map of Australia so she and Papa could follow our journey. I wish I was coming, Grace, Nan said as she hugged me tight. I'm going to miss our cuddles. Who do you think Nan is to her? We just found out her name is Grace. We live near a tiny place called Binham. Our journey started and finished here. They haven't started yet. On the road at last. I waved to Nan and Papa until Dad turned onto the road leading out to the highway. I felt sad and excited at the same time. Nobody said anything for ages until we reached the coast. We saw the last autumn leaves fluttering like flags on the grapevines of the Barossa Valley. Okay, so that sounds like one place that they visited the Barossa Valley. Then, at the Koorong, Luke made us laugh. Look, he said, a pelican. Its beak can hold more than its belly can. That sounds like another place, the Koorong. On our first night, we camped on the edge of the Flinders Ranges. It felt like we were the only people in the world. 
Okay, make another mark. There's another place. At Streaky Bay, we stuck our heads in the mouth of a great white shark. Make another mark. We made letters with our shadows at Murphy's Haystacks. The giant boulders glowed in the afternoon sun. Sounds like we need another mark. Looks like maybe for every little picture is a new place. So think about that as you're making your marks in your paper. That evening at the camping ground, mom said Billy had to use the women's bathroom because he was still little. He was embarrassed. Okay, he said, but if anyone comes in, call me Kylie. That's not a new place yet. We drove past wheat silos and windmills and Billy asked, are we there yet? boy. It took two days for us to cross the Null Arbor Plain. I waved to the people passing in trucks and cars and they always waved back. We all had our favorite positions in the car. Dad loved driving. Luke rode shotgun. Billy and I shared the middle. Billyville, border, Graceland. Mom liked the back where she could lie down and read. The great Australian bite looked like a giant had bitten a huge chunk out of Australia. Dad and Luke stood right on the edge of the cliff, but mom stayed back. She held on to Billy and me so tight that my hand went numb. Oh, she said, I can't look. So there they are at the great Australian bite. So that's another place. There's the bite right there on the map. At head of bite, we saw 10 whales in the sea below us. A mother and her calf were rolling and wallowing together. Their mournful music sounded like an underwater orchestra. It's making me sleepy, I said to mom. They must be singing a whale lullaby. How cool would that be to see? So awesome. Okay, Let's see where they're gonna go next. Over the desert and into the west. All right, so let's pay attention. Here comes a new place at Eucla. We had sandy sandwiches near the ruins of the old telegraph station. The next day, we traveled for nearly 150 kilometers on a really straight road. Dad pretended to drive with his eyes closed, but I could tell he was peeking. So, Eucla, that's another place. Luke surfed on stone at Wave Rock. There's another place. But Dad waited for the real waves at Rot Nest Island. There's another place. The Kuokas came so close to me I could see their tiny whiskers. Look at those little Australian creatures. After Perth, we went to see the Pinnacles. Okay, there's another place, the Pinnacles. Whoa, those are cool. They poked up through the sand like giant limestone fingers. Here's what I think the Pinnacles really are. So she thinks there's a monster hidden underground and the Pinnacles are its claws sticking up. <laughs> All right, here comes a new place. It was so windy at Geraldton that the trees grew sideways. Cool. We drove past a pink tapestry of wildflowers and Billy asked, are we there yet? That's the title of this book, isn't it? The further north we traveled, the hotter it became. We stood in the shallows at Monkey Mia to see the dolphins. Oh, there's another place. Too crowded, said Dad. I liked it better when it was just us and the whales. Mom made me wear my hat all the time. Hats and sunscreen, she'd say every time we stopped. This sun will burn you to a crisp. My stupid hat. I guess she didn't like wearing it. That afternoon, Mom and Billy and I had a picnic in, a, in the dunes, then fell asleep like a pride of lions. Later, when we went for a dip, a dolphin came up close and swam right between us. 
Oh, how fun. That would be so cool. All right, so here comes a new place. We went snorkeling at Turquoise Bay. A gentle current carried us over the coral reef. Remember we talked about the reef? As though the ocean was giving us a tour, there were so many fish like sparkling jewels. My favorites were the tiny blue angels. So here's Turquoise Bay. So they started here and so far they've gone whoop, up here to Turquoise Bay. The Outback. All right, here comes a new place at Broom. We ate crunchy fish and chips and watched the moon reflected in the mudflats of Robach Bay. It's called the Staircase to the Moon. The next day, we camped at Winjana Gorge. Another place, make your mark. Mom loved the Boab trees. They look like opera singers, she said. Dad and Luke called them upside down trees. Mm, I think they called them upside down because the branches look like roots of the tree. We flew over the bungle bungles in a helicopter without any doors and my stomach turned inside out. I can't look, said mom again. Okay, here comes a new place. At Tunnel Creek, we waded through an underground river. The dark water came right up to my armpits. When something slimy slithered past my leg, I screamed. Luke said, don't be such a soup. Possible creepy things in the water. This is what she was imagining was down there. Heading south on the Tanami track, the sand was so deep our car got stuck. Everyone felt hot and grouchy and mom was worried we'd be stranded in the desert. Luke found a tiny thorny devil standing fierce as a dragon, and that cheered us up. It's a kind of lizard that lives in Australia. A football team helped push us out, and Billy asked, are we there yet? Here comes a new place at Alice Springs. We stayed with mom's friend, Ruth. The days were hot, but the nights were freezing. Luke and Billy played footy with some of the local boys. That afternoon, we drove out to see Uluru. Okay, that's a new place they're going to see. Dad spotted it first when we were still 35 kilometers away. <gasps> Whoa, he said, that is a big rock. At sunset, we watched its color fade to purple. So here's Uluru, look at this. At noon, afternoon, dark, and evening, so it changed color as the sun set. Okay, here comes a new place. We hiked between the round red domes of Katajuta. The trees whispered to us as we walked through the valley of the winds. Pretty. Man, doesn't Australia have such cool landscape? Such strange looking mountains and trees. Okay, so here's one more, one more place that we're gonna mark down for today. Uluru is the heart of Australia, a huge red heart right in the middle of the country. One day we got up early in the cool of the morning and walked around the rock. I felt as tiny as an ant. So, so far they've gone all the way up here and they went right to the middle of the country, to Uluru. The big rock in the middle of the country. Okay, so this is where I'm gonna pause for today. We're gonna read the rest tomorrow. But if you need to, you can always go back and listen to this again to mark down how many places this family has visited so far in Australia. Because you wanna make those marks on your paper, okay? Because we're gonna try to find out when this is over, how many all together they visited in their long trip. All right. Okay. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.